So let's start by finding out what a husband and wife team is doing to save the world. Gary Martin was an ophthalmologist. His wife, Cheryl, was a medical administrator. They're both retired now, but if you ring their doorbell and they don't answer, it could be because they're off in the Himalayas, working to cure the region's people of cataract problems. They've signed on with an international effort called the Himalayan Cataract Project that has helped over a million people to date. So here's a look at the project and how the Martins are contributing. The Himalayan mountains include some of the highest peaks on the planet. Rugged and forbidding, this landscape is also home to 40 million people, many of whom are among the world's poorest. According to the World Health Organization, more than half of the people here will lose their sight by age 70. But 80% of such cases are preventable, and half of those are due to treatable cataracts. The effort to improve eye care in this region is called the Himalayan Cataract Project. Run by Dr. Sanduk Ruit and based in Kathmandu, Nepal, it has treated well over a million people and performed over 80,000 eye surgeries since it was established in 1994. The project organizes volunteers from around the world to come for weeks or months at a time to provide vision care to the citizens of Bhutan, Nepal, Tibet, and India. Gary Martin, a retired ophthalmologist, and his wife Cheryl, a retired medical administrator, began volunteering with the Himalayan Cataract Project after touring Bhutan in 2001. Gary had an appointment at the local hospital just to see what they were doing there. When he saw the, kind, the level of care that they were providing for ophthalmology in the Himalayan region and understood the, that there are more cataracts in the Himalayan region than anywhere else in the world because of the elevation and the diet of the people, he saw a great need and something that he perhaps would be able to assist with. The project is an excellent fit with my experience because much of the work being done there draws on the types of procedures that were an early part of my learning experience and that are in my repertoire, so to speak. When they arrived in Nepal on their first mission, they spent a week in Kathmandu with Dr. Ruit at his Telganga Eye Center. Then they traveled deep into the countryside to provide eye care to the rural population. And we spend anywhere from six to eight, nine weeks in the area where we go. This, then Gary does the clinical work and I work on the spreadsheets with the computer and work with the people on their systems and how to, to best run their clinic. The Himalayan Cataract Project relies entirely on funding from individuals, corporations, and foundations, and the volunteers who give their time and effort. As the Martins see it, volunteering internationally is not just a wonderful way to help people in need. It's also a great way to get beyond the normal tourist encounters to experience other cultures up close. Most of the time when we go with a tour, with a group in particular, what we see is the facade of a building, the facade of the people. We see their clothing, we see what they're doing, but we don't hear how they feel. We don't experience the kinds of things they experience on a daily basis. It's quite different from, from just seeing them once by. It's these encounters and the joy of helping others that keep the Martins coming back to volunteer again and again. To see the smile on the face of an individual who has gone from seeing light and day to being able to see reasonably well again or quite well again is, is the thing that motivates me most and makes it all worthwhile. Uh, their, their gratitude, the, their smiles, their, uh, their bows, their uh, touching our heads and, uh, and, and presenting us with katas, a, 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 a scarf of honor. That, it leaves me with a feeling that is uh, not describable. Gary sees retirement as an ideal phase of life for pursuing volunteer work, and he's found no shortage of opportunities. I'm firmly convinced that there are opportunities there for anyone who has reasonable skills and, and is willing to try to share those. There are a multitude of organizations that are crying for that type of volunteer. Oftentimes, seniors are uniquely qualified because, number one, we can provide some of the resources necessary directly. That is, we can pay our own way if necessary, which is what we basically prefer to do. Uh, number two, we have the time 
to form the relationships and to get a clear understanding of what we really can contribute. And that's absolutely crucial. You can't move forward with something until you find out where you really are, and you can't do that with a single week there. Working with the Himalayan people has changed the Martins from within, altering their view of the world and their place in it. In that sense, they seem to have received at least as much as they have given. It's a very different kind of experience that they have and uh, it has touched something in us that I think it's a softening of our being and an understanding that we truly are all here together. With me to tell us more about the Himalayan Cataract Project is its co-director, Dr. Jeffrey Tabin. Dr. Tabin is professor of ophthalmology and visual sciences and director of the Division of International Ophthalmology at the University of Utah's John A. Moran Eye Center. Dr. Tabin coordinates fundraising for the Himalayan Cataract Project, recruiting American faculty, soliciting donations of equipment, and handling the project's logistics. He spends at least three months a year working in Asia. He also happens to be the first ophthalmologist to reach the summit of Mount Everest. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you, Alexa. Well, this is quite an accomplishment. For our viewers who don't know, tell us what cataracts actually is. Well, a cataract is a normal aging process in the crystalline lens of the eye, which focuses light on the retina. And as we all get older, the proteins in the lens of the eye become slightly more opaque, start blocking light, and in America, most people come to see me for cataract surgery when they're having trouble driving at night. Mm -hmm. But worldwide, there are 20 million people whose eyes have gone completely opaque. You look at their pupil and it's white, and they can't even see the motion of a hand moving in front of their face. You know, I went to the Him I was fortunate enough to go to the Himalayas. What a beautiful people, mm -hmm. what a beautiful group of people. But why in that area of the country is it so prominent that people have cataracts problems? Well, it's a bit multifactorial, Alexis. It's largely the intense UV sunlight, also a low level of antioxidants in the diet, very few green vegetables or fruits. Mm -hmm. There's also a bit of a genetic predilection. And there's also something in the People who have chronic diarrhea and have very poor water supply and the high fluid shifts, it leads to a very whitening of the lens of the eye at an early age. And then the final factor is before we started working there is a complete lack of doctors. And so our program has really been focused on training local doctors to do the work and creating infrastructure and the support systems for sustaining eye care. This is such a grand and incredible project. What was it that actually motivated you initially? Well, I worked yeah, as a general doctor in Nepal. I'd initially gone to Nepal climbing. I went there when I was in medical school. And after I completed my training, I worked as a general doctor. And I saw most of the big problems were public health issues, problems dealing with the poor diet, the bad water, and things that an individual doctor couldn't really address. And then I saw the miracle of cataract surgery. And it's actually mind-boggling. People are totally blind. And in that part of the world, it was just accepted. You get old, your hair turns white, your eye turns white, and then you die. And people would just get depressed and wait to die. And I watched a Dutch team come in and do cataract surgery. And the next day, people weren't just able to see, they were restored to life. It was the most dramatic thing. People only seeing light and dark, amazing? and the day after surgery, seeing perfectly. I, the only way that I could even understand this, I had LASIK surgery and uh -huh. I was legally uh -huh. blind yep. before yep. I did. In that moment, it was like a miracle. I can just imagine what it would have been like to be in it, it, some of these people. In terms of this project, though, I saw a lot of young people in the, in the um, piece that were getting you know, cataract surgery. What are some ways that, that these individuals can help prevent or protect themselves from the screws of cataracts? Well, there's a higher level of both genetic and nutritional cataracts in children. And then, as I mentioned, the high fluid shifts of chronic dysentery leads to people going blind, often in their 20s and 30s, and a large number by their 40s and 50s. People in America can avoid having a progression of their lens changes by wearing sunglasses when they go out in the sun by eating lots of good fruit and vegetables and a really good antioxidant diet. 
What about these volunteers? The Martins certainly seem like well, they're passionate about what they're doing. How many older volunteers do you have, and how does one volunteer? Well, we've had quite a few ophthalmologists, professors at medical schools who are now retired, who go, and the Martins just returned from working in Lhasa, Tibet for us for three months. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the doctors that we teach, the actual cataract surgery is kind of a hand-eye coordination practice sport. And they can become quite adept surgeons, but not necessarily the level of ophthalmologist that we like to think of ourselves in America. And we have a lot of older ophthalmologists who are no longer doing surgery, who are going over and sharing their skills, teaching, building up the local surgeons and building up their reputations. And the Martins have really changed eye care in Kalimpong in northern India, in an area of northern Nepal, and now in Tibet. We look for volunteers who really have a skill to share. Well, the obvious thing are retired ophthalmologists, sure. but also retired ophthalmic nurses, retired nurses. But Cheryl has been going with Jerry, and she goes and works and helps That's computerize fabulous. and improve the records. Well, let me ask so you any skill, really. Let me ask you before we go there really quickly, what do you think that seniors get out of it when they go over there to do this volunteering? Well, I think anyone. I don't think you necessarily it's something for a senior. It's any person being able to give something back. You know, mm -hmm. when you're a physician and you're able to contribute so much to the legacy of a region, as Cheryl was saying in the piece, the personal interaction of rather than just going and seeing the culture, sure. but really interacting and being with them. And even if you go as just a volunteer to just help Any hold region. hands right. and right. Uh, reassure scared people and put eye drops in the eyes. There's just a great reward of the personal well, involvement. Well, clearly, any, any volunteering is important, and we thank you for starting this project and for being here today. Well, thank you very much, Alexis.